in the workshop using the ER40 collets in my milling machine. This is my Clarkson milling chuck that I would normally use for serious milling jobs. The rest of the time I use a very old drill chuck with an R8 adapter. When I say R8 I'm referring to the fitting on the end of the tooling, partly parallel and partly tapered. This R8 fitting is held in position by a long threaded drawbar and in this clip I've loosened the drawbar and I'm unscrewing it. You don't need to fully unscrew the drawbar because in a moment I'm going to tap this with a soft hammer which will dislodge the taper but if you screw the drawbar all the way out when you tap it it will damage the end of the thread. As you can see in this clip by tapping the top of the drawbar the R8 taper is released and it's only at this point that you need to unscrew the drawbar fully to remove the tooling. This is an ER40 collet chuck and it's also on an R8 taper. I've re-engaged the drawbar and I'm tightening it up to hold the taper firmly into the spindle. And here's the box of ER40 collets that I showed in the previous video. For this test I'm going to use a 3 16th of an inch diameter slot drill that's designed to hold a drill or a milling cutter or a piece of bar which is 3 16th of an inch in diameter. The spanner that came with the collet chuck is very accurately machined so you have to very carefully manoeuvre it into position. On this particular milling machine there's no way of locking the spindle so the only way I could fully tighten the collet was to put the spanner back on the drawbar which is not a good way of doing it. For this test I've put a piece of silver steel in my rotary table. Now silver steel is quite hard metal to cut. It's nowhere near as soft as mild steel. So I thought it would be a good test to see how these collets perform. I could have used a piece of brass but that wouldn't have been a good test. Apart from testing the ER40 collet system I also wanted to see how good these milling cutters are. And so far so good. The milling cutter is milling the piece of silver steel and I don't wish to be picky or anything, but I don't like the noise it's making. If I was using my normal, very old tailstock chuck for this job, it wouldn't make a noise like this. Something is loose. To be fair though, I am milling it dry. I'll put a bit of oil on the cutter. Once I applied the oil, the tone changed, but then when I applied the pressure again, look what happened. The problem is, the collet isn't tight enough. I cannot tighten the collet because I cannot lock the spindle. With the spanner back on the drawbar at the top of the spindle, I re-tightened the collet chuck and carried on taking quite a heavy cut on this piece of silver steel. There's also a bit of movement on the rotary table, which is not the best quality rotary table I've got. But then again, this is a cheap rotary table. The Vertex rotary table that I have is an expensive one. There is a big difference. When you're buying tooling, you have to buy tooling relative to your pocket. But all I can really say is, if you buy the best, you'll only buy it once. These ER40 collets, for instance, were not expensive and they have very good quality, I'm quite pleased with them. If only the chuck had a slot for a spanner on the main body of it, then I could hold it solid while I tightened the collet in position. When I was at RDG Tools, I bought two of these ER40 collet chucks, one for the milling machine with an R8 taper and one for my small Boxford lathe, which has a number three Moss taper for the spindle. The R8 taper has a slot up the side of it which engages with a peg that bolts into the spindle. But that's not really strong enough to hold the R8 taper in position when I'm tightening the collet ring with such a big spanner. With the amount of leverage I'm just worried that I would shear off the pin that holds the R8 in place. Note to self, I need to refill my oil can, it's getting a bit low. What do I think to this ER40 collet chuck? Well, not a lot really. If it had a slot for a spanner on the top of it like the Morse Taper number 3 version does, then it would be fine. Time now for test number 2. I've fitted a much larger collet into the chuck and I've also fitted a much larger slot drill. Fitting this larger slot drill was a bit more difficult, it kept falling out. But all was well when I rested the cutter on a plastic box while I tightened the collet ring. What I don't understand is, as I tighten the collet ring by hand, Suddenly it starts to stiffen up, about a third of the way up. And that isn't holding the cutter, that's why it fell out. Then once I apply the spanner, I can tighten it all the way. So I don't know why it starts to tighten so prematurely. Time to do some serious milling. This is an old cast iron axle box I made for a locomotive many years ago and got the dimensions wrong. 
and it seemed like a good idea to use this to test the heavy duty capability of the milling cutters. And immediately a problem shows up. It starts off okay, but then as I traverse the work, the cut gets shallower and shallower as the milling cutter is pushed up into the collet because I cannot tighten it enough. I would never use a milling cutter of this diameter in my drill chuck. I would use my Clarkson R8 taper chuck for this. But the Clarkson chuck is designed to use milling cutters which are threaded at the end and screw into the collets and on this Clarkson chuck when the cutters are screwed into the collets they cannot fall out and they also cannot go in an upwards direction when taking a heavy cut. But that's the Clarkson design, it's designed to be just a milling chuck whereas these collets are multi-purpose. So I tightened the collet chuck ring as much as I dare and I'm now milling in the opposite direction. This is a piece of cast iron and I am going slightly too fast, I do admit that but I want to test the durability of the cutters. In this clip I've mounted a piece of brass in the machine vise and I've changed the cutter for an end mill. An end mill has got four cutting surfaces a slot drill has only got two. In this clip I'm milling one side of a scrap piece of gun metal. And this particular piece of gun metal was one side of a main bearing, but I made a mess of it. But I always keep parts like this, just to remind me that I am after all a musician, not an engineer, and they're also useful for test pieces, for testing bits of equipment like this. Well, the milling cutter seems to be milling this without event, it doesn't seem to be going up inside the collet, but I can't say I'm over impressed with the finish. I don't know why this is, whether the collet's still a bit loose or the milling cutter's not right, but it's not a good finish and these are very fine cuts. At this point it's not looking like I want to fit this component to the milling machine. Today after I finish voicing over, editing and uploading this video to YouTube, I'm going to take this collet chuck back to RDG Tools and instead I'm going to buy two full sets of R8 collets in imperial and metric sizes and I will use the other ER40 collet chuck that has the spanner slots and all the collet sets on my Boxford lathe. That's it for this one, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.